I am Mohammed Yunus. I'm from Bangladesh. Uh, I'm the founder of Grameen Bank. Mohammed Yunus is the economist who won the Nobel Peace Prize for alleviating global poverty. Now he's helping to steer our way through COVID-19. He wants us to turn our backs on the world we once knew, to champion a safer future, and to consign to history the challenges that bar us from reaching it. I'm James Chow, and welcome to this special conversation. Mohammed Yunus, welcome back to the China Current. The last time we spoke on camera was in London in October, when you were sad, perhaps even a little bit angry about the state of the world and what we have all done to contribute towards its decline. Now that we have COVID nineteen, is there anything to look forward to? Yes, yes, indeed. Uh, first of all, uh, I'm not the only one who was angry. The whole world was upset, angry. You describe it any way you like, because. We're in a disaster path. It's very obvious. Uh, you admit it you, uh, publicly. You admit it privately, but everybody knew that this is what is happening. So we are seeing a deadline and the wealth concentration, very ugly wealth concentration, and that is also part of the world that we uh, were in uh, pre-corona time, and also the artificial intelligence, which will bring massive unemployment and is gradually creeping in and it will become an upsurge of unemployment. And this uh, all is a disaster part. They all combine and we see no results uh, other than what we see in front of us. Uh, it's a tipping point that uh, we never can overcome. Now that gives a tremendous opportunity because the whole global order has collapsed. The economy is part of a total collapse. So when it collapses, it gives you a new opportunity to build it again. So it's not about restarting the engine that is stopped because of the coronavirus. We don't want to start that engine. So that's a message that I try to bring in. I said, this is a good opportunity, fantastic opportunity. Let's not start the engine. Let's make it build a new engine which will take us to a different path. You're speaking to us from your home, where you also yes, work in Dhaka in Bangladesh. And where you are in Dhaka, you live alongside the 4 million workers in the garment industry who make the clothes that we wear, who make the clothes that we enjoy. What's their fate going forward now that we're hit by this pandemic? Well, that's terrible because uh, garment factories to begin with were also locked down to stop to couldn't work. Now government is opening it up because of the uh, fact that they need to livelihood. So we go back to the issue of uh, life versus livelihood. And uh, if you don't work, you don't have an income, you have a terrible uh, situation of surviving. So it is about 4 million government workers, which is a very significant number. But if you take all the people who lost their daily income, uh, either through losing the daily uh, breadwinning activities, uh, uh, little petty tradings and so on and so forth, or losing daily wage earning and so on, that will be more than 60 million people. What happens when you have a conflict <clears throat> between life and livelihood and which side you go? Uh, see, life has no option. Uh, it has to be safe. This is a prim primacy of the issue. Uh, livelihood has options. What are the options? We can open the garment industry. They can go back, risk their life, and risk other people's life, their family members, their neighbors, and everybody's life. Uh, and if, if your garment industry opens up, other industries, why aren't you opening up? Uh, and businesses say, why aren't you opening up? Religious institutions say, why don't you want to open it up? You open the door of Pandora's box because you open something. I heard this when you said, this at Bangkok, at your social business summit in 2019. Poverty belongs in a museum. And I think, Professor Yunus, when that day arrives, we'll all be buying tickets to see that museum. We'll all be looking through the glass case and looking at what poverty used to be like for us all. Professor Yunus, I want to ask you about this because this year is a big year for you. I know that you never talk about your birthday, but this will be your 
80th year. If we use that as a milestone for your life, how you've chosen to use your life, you've invested all those years in helping to secure a safer, happier tomorrow's world. If we look at today's world though, and we look at our young people, how can they look forward to tomorrow when they're trying to meet the needs of today? I try to explain to young people uh, that you must feel that uh, you have unlimited capacity inside of your, inside yourself. And feel that capacity, feel that creative power that you have. Once you can start feeling that, yes, I have that capacity, then ask the question, what use I'm going to make of it. Because if I don't use it, it's just wasted away. I said, today you are born as not only as a human being, you are really a superhuman being because of the capacity that technology and all the knowledge brings it to you. You alone is good enough to change the whole world. You don't have to wait for anybody else. You have that power. It's the power of individual. It's the power of imagination what makes the change of the entire world. Don't worry about doing big things on the first day. Start tiny little thing that you hate to see in front of you. Change it. If you can change that one little thing, you can change the whole world. The China Current continues its special coverage on the coronavirus outbreak. Go to our social media, at the China Current, and our website for interviews, videos, and podcasts. I'm James Chow. Thank you.